Hey, hey guys, this is the second part of a tutorial on how to make your fraction shader that looks like a bubble in Godot Engine. Um, if you missed the first part, it's mainly about creating the assets that will make this possible to make the proper shader for doing a faked refraction. So if you missed that, please take a look. And it's pretty easy to create them on your own. Um, you can probably watch it and fast forward and then watch this video. And of course, a link to that will be below. So this is pretty much showing the effect and how it'll look when we're finished. So without any ado, let's get started. All right, so let's kind of show what I did and retrace our steps. So first, what I'll do is create a base scene because you can't really see it just by itself. As you kind of saw before, the, the bubble by itself doesn't really show the effect unless there's something in the scene with it. So we could just kind of copy what we have here with this other scene. So what we could do is just do a save scene as, and we could just call it level two or something like that, right? Okay, so then this is level two. We can just kind of uh, delete all these things. Okay, yeah, sure. And we could probably just you know, do it like this. Delete them all, all right. So. Uh, let's go ahead and what I like to do is kind of just make some prototypes this way. I add um, what I want to do in the scene that I'm kind of playing around with and then later on what you can do is you can just save the scene branch and it'll save it as that separate you know bubble that we've been working on. That's kind of what I do usually so let's just go ahead and do that. Then and then we'll just call this here and another sub scene. So remember, one of them is for creating the effects, and one of them is just to have the graphics move up and down. So we got this one. Then we'll go ahead and uh, actually, I forgot. I made these regular nodes. We should change these uh, to sprites. So they should both be sprite. Cool. And then this guy, we'll go ahead and grab the texture we created, and it should be here. Bubble two. Same thing. Cool. And we'll go ahead and look here. And there's normal map slot for us. We'll go ahead and load that. Okay, so right now, uh, the normal map can affect lighting, but it really won't do anything for our refraction that we want to create. So we'll go ahead and do that uh, by creating a shader script. So creating the shader is pretty easy. First, we just go to materials, uh, new shader material, uh, shader, uh, new shader, and you kind of click the shader and actually it'll give you the editor right away. And the shader type canvas item this kind of tells you it's just a it's it it, run, it it operates on a canvas canvas is just a 2d place to uh, to draw sprites and things like that uh, you will do a uniform uh, float re fraction magnitude so magnitude is like the the strength of an effect so like like a vector magnitude is how long the vector is so and we'll say void 
fragment. Fragment just says to operate on fragments, which are just pretty much like pixels. You can think of it that way. And we'll do vec3. And we'll do their fraction. This is the vector uh, that I was talking about with Snell's Law. And we're just going to pretty much uh, do a texture lookup with it uh, on the normal map. We only need the RGB part, not the alpha. Um, this is kind of interesting. So because the axis, if you know how Godot works, uh, it, this is not up. Uh, in the Godot and in a lot of 2D games, up is actually down. So we'll invert that because the texture that we're using here for the normal map, uh, Y is up. So we'll have to invert that. And just to clarify that, this only for the 2D engine is the Y axis reversed like that. So yeah, th this vector is, uh, it's just, it, it pretty has, it pretty much has no effect on, on the values that are read from here, except for just inverting the Y axis. That's just the only important part to know. Okay, so we'll do, we'll do the regular texture read from the screen here. Texture, texture. Actually, I'm starting out from the screen. This is from the actual texture of the bubble. And this will be the screen. So now we're going to apply our refraction. So we'll use a refraction vector here. Red and green channels. And so we're just doing 2D. So the other, the other dimension doesn't really have an effect here. Uh, and we'll use the refraction magnitude that we already have here. And I probably don't need to use texture LOD here, but uh, that's what I use in the past. It, you can actually blur a little bit easier with it, so if you want to try that, you could use it. I, I'll, I'll probably see if I can use the other uh, normal texture read instead, uh, make it a little more efficient if possible. And then uh, what we'll do is we only want to apply the effect when uh, alpha value so this is of the texture that we read so the, the bubble texture so this bubble here if it's above a certain amount so only in the areas where it's above like uh, 0 0.04 alpha will we actually do anything So this offset screen read. So that's the one we just, so this is pretty much the refraction of the screen read. So it's kind of our simulator refraction of the screen read. And else, so in the cases where alpha is really low, we just want to do a regular screen color. Or sorry, regular texture color. Oh, whoops, guys, I put this in the wrong, uh, the wrong sprite. Let's move this, uh, let's move this up. So, it's supposed to go in this guy. So that is why that was coming out in this weird artifact here. Let's go ahead and do that. So, we'll go to material, new shading material. shader and I'll just paste what I already have done and now we'll have to go back and for now I'll just change this to just give the color so actually we can just remove it this should be a valid script yeah 
Okay, so, you know, nothing too great yet. You know, we might want to actually put filter on this to see. Let's see here if that looks a little better. Oh, let me turn it off. That didn't seem to really do a lot. Um. Oh, that's the normal map. This should be... Level two, filter, re-import. Okay, looks a little smoother. I'm not sure, it's whatever you like. You might like that better, it's up to you. So it looks like you're getting a little fraction here, so that's that's cool. So let's go back to that uh, here, and we can kind of you can kind of play with the settings however you like it. Uh, maybe you want more of a curvy effect. Actually, that's it. Reversed magnitude. I should probably call it inverse magnitude. I kind of like 30 though. 30 at eh, 20 is kind of cool. And now what we'll do is we'll add the shader for going up and down, giving a wavy effect. Okay, so first we'll delete this. We don't need that. We'll have a time scale. Two. This is just, you know, for every millisecond or however often this is called, uh, this time value that we have here, it's called just time in the script, uh, will update. And uh, it eventually wraps around. I'm not sure the exact data size of it, but uh, the important thing to know is just it just pretty much will keep changing and increment until it, it, it wraps around. So I can give you some cool effects based on time. So I'm pretty much just copying what I've already did and we'll just talk about it. So, so this is a vertex shader. Uh, vertex shader just pretty much uh, change where something is rendered, not, not the actual individual pixel. So it kind of, it, it's used a lot for while manipulating vertexes. In this case, it's a canvas here. So, you know, we have, I guess, four vertices, vertices here. Um, so those pretty much just get, you know, in our case, we'll have them get pushed up and down and we'll just modify the, uh, the Y dimension. So now we get it to go up and down. So as the time goes on, uh, as you know, a sine wave will repeat. It just keeps going up and down. And so you'll have these periods. Um, and uh, so if you know your trig, uh, every two pi uh, radians, this will just repeat. And, and so I don't really know how fast this time is incremented here. It, it might be milliseconds and then wrap over at some large value, but um, what you what you get here um, is it's scale by this time scale. So all you really need to know about this is that it makes the uh, the texture wave up and down and until the left side and the right side are up and down at different uh, times. So uh, this might hit the, the peak at a different time than this side. Um, and you see that kind of effect uh, manipulated by what part of the texture is being drawn, whether it's higher in the Y dimension or in the X dimension. And in, in this, this vertex part here, it represents the uh, the four sides. Um, so so you like, for instance, if you get like this one here, it's probably zero, zero, or actually, I'm sorry, it'd be, it'd be uh, zero, one, since it's the largest part of Y. So it affects a little differently. So it might be a little further advanced in the Y here um, than it would be in the X. This would just be zero in that case, right? So it'll be in that different part of the period. And so um, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's higher, you know, in, in the waves, as you know, as a sine wave works, it, it may be uh, lower just depending on where the wave is. So anyway, it just makes it move differently. 
So it's kind of gives you wavy effects and it's uh, different on each side of the texture. Okay, so now what I noticed um, is pretty much what I had before. Uh, I noticed that there's a little bit, a little bit of uh, artifact here. You can kind of see it goes up and down. So what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit smaller uh, because you can see that actually the part here that's that's not shown is kind of like an artifact here. That that's refraction is a little bit larger than this uh, than this bubble texture. So, and they don't line up because this is the only one that waves around. And if I try waving them both, it wouldn't really work because the time scales will be slightly different. So the period of the of the sine wave wouldn't match. So uh, what we can do is just make it uh, this graphic a little bit bigger, and that should be fine. And we have to do it uh, right from the center. So, whoops. I misspelled amplitude. There we go. Okay, so we can scale this here. Let's see here, transform, scale. How about mm, almost twenty percent? How about that? That might be a little too much. Let's just see. Yeah, that's a little too much. How about? Or five percent? Is that noticeable? Yeah, it's a little, a little noticeable. How about let's try around about 0 0.005. Sorry, 0 0.05. Let's see what that looks like. Um, yeah, barely noticeable. I kind of like that a little better. And now you move around. Oops, we could probably join these now. What? Hold on a second, there we go. So interesting, but when I do a control Z, sometimes it actually affects the script. I didn't expect it to. Huh, okay. Let's go ahead and save this off as a scene. Projectiles, oh, graphics too. How about that? We'll just call it that. And actually, the naming is horrible. So just in due diligence, we'll just call it. Uh, how about let's see, uh, refraction. And then we'll just call this bubble um, texture graphics. Cool. And so now that looks it looks decent. That's a little bit too pronounced, though. So I figured out what the problem was here. It actually, um, when you look at the material on the shader, the shader parameters, it, <laughs> it, the same thing happened before. So even though the script says 30 here, um, it saves this 20 value uh, as a parameter. So once you do that, everything looks pretty good. So that's all that was. So just be sure to check the shader parameters. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, if you like this, I can make a series out of this and we can make like a bubble bobble style, style game, like an arcade style. And, and I can walk you step by step on how to make a fleshed out 2D side scrolling game. Well, thanks so much, guys, for watching this tutorial. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Also, just a note there's uh, the entire source code is available on GitHub, and there'll be a link below. So, thanks so much. Let me know how you like this tutorial and if there's anything I could add to make it clearer, and I uh, hope to see you soon.